And he did badly, and he is not the government of Holland right now. Thank God. So anybody who says, and the Prime Minister said this, if you bring in PR, you'll get extremist governments. The opposite is true. Good voting systems keep extremism to the extremes. Yeah, you might have a few more parties. But uh, I find, and I think we're seeing this with Trump, if political elites try to suppress feelings and emotions people are having about issues, you can drive them uh, crazy to the point where they put a uh, Cheeto-dusted guy in the White House who may bomb North Korea at some point if he thinks about it on Twitter, right? He, like might, you, you, you he might even bomb Canada for all well, we know. He's coming now. We, we have issues. And see the handshake the other day? He's got handshake issues. Uh, we'll take, I'm going to take some from some folks that haven't asked yet, and then we'll, we're going to start to wrap up. Oh, okay. yes. Um, what do you say that it will be you know, this is a nerd issue or a Baltimore issue? Because I oh, think yeah. it's a sympathetic audience. Obviously, we're here to agree and we, we believe in it. Right. So, but as you look at the polling across the country, yes. Canadians have not rejected or have not overwhelmingly come out of fall against you the way you would expect it. Perhaps. All the polling, by the way, on the Prime Minister right now is what it is. Both of the other major parties don't have leaders. Yeah. That's a thing. Uh, and, and he might be just that popular, well, he'll be the, the Prime Minister forever. Two things. A uh, guy in Kitchener just wrote me tonight. Uh, watched an interview that the Prime Minister gave last October on the one year anniversary of his government in French. He's, and the reporter said, how's it going? And Trudeau said something interesting. He didn't highlight anything in particular, but what he chose to highlight, he said, the energy around electoral reform has greatly diminished. It was very high when Stephen Harper was Prime Minister, and it has dissipated now that I'm Prime Minister. People are happy. He says this, people are happy, so they don't want to change the voting system. And I was like, so this guy said, ooh, that's worrisome. It sounds like he's backing away from the promise. So he starts an online petition. And, he, and his claim at the beginning was, I hope I can get my mom's knitting group to sign it, because there were 50 ladies in the knitting group in Kitchener. He asked me to sponsor it. I did. When I delivered it to Parliament a couple months ago, 132,000 Canadians had signed the petition, making it the largest petition in Canadian history. So nobody cares. Uh, Fair Vote, <laughs> right? Fair Vote uh, Canada uh, raised money and sponsored polling in 20 Liberal ridings, asking people who had voted Liberal. More than 72% was the average wanted this promise maintained. That's a high percentage within a very targeted group, an important group if I were the government. Mm. So this is myth-making, right? It's inert thing. It's in the weeds. Our guy's very popular. Let's do a photo bomb and everyone's going to forget about it, right? The, that, that storytelling uh, only gets to uh, continue if people believe it. But it's a good challenge to put. Is this an obscure issue? And maybe even just as an issue, standalone electoral reform, MMP, STV, it's very confusing. The Prime Minister's word should matter. It's got to. Because if, if you can't believe him, I mean, fundamentally, not just like politicians are all liars, but you can't fundamentally believe what he promises, uh, then you have a problem. Because you can't believe whatever next comes, and next, and next, and next. And we need to have, we need to hold up our leadership. We need to expect more from the people we elect. Because we tend to, as people, fall to expectations, or rise to them. We deserve that energy, is what I would argue about our politics. I'll take a couple more and move up. Um, our constituency, Bidrata Capel, submitted a, a brief to the committee when you met here last year. Yeah. We've been following uh, the events, and I, I just want to compliment you on the leadership role you personally played oh, over the last leadership. year, including tonight. <laughs> Let's do our Let's do our Let's do our Let's Coffee cups down. Don't try to do it with a full coffee cup. Down. Okay, good. Uh, as your arms are folded, take a look at your arms, just to see uh, how your arms are folded. Like which arm comes up over the top, and which one tucks under. Don't don't look at your neighbors. Don't. It'll totally confuse you. Okay, great. Everybody good? Okay, let that go. Awesome. Uh, fold your arms again, please, but opposite. You can. I have faith in you. I uh, take it a step at a time. So for me, right this up. No, yeah, exactly. Uh, How can you even do that? Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, I doubt. Okay, good, good. And the dexterity is hard. It's awesome. Let that go. Uh, fold your arms again that way one more time, please. 
that, that really would be awesome. Okay. Easier the second time. <laughs> if you're having trouble, it was so good the first time. No. No. <laughs> okay, good. Let that go. You? No. <laughs> good. Okay. The very first time I asked you to pull drums. The very first time. Um, what went through your mind? Nothing. 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 You thought you were voting. Oh, I see. How did? Uh, did uh, how much thinking went into it? Uh, a lot. A little. <laughs> how much thinking? I say pull drums. How much thinking? How much thought process? None. None. I got this. I can do this. Okay, when I ask, and how does it feel? Comfortable. Natural, comfortable, Natural. normal. Okay, when I asked you to fold your arms the other way, um, any thinking going to it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The, the uh, volume in the room went up. You all started talking and stuff. Yeah. 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 The first, I can't remember the first one. A lot of people did that, right? Went to the first one first again, and to figure out the second I one. I did, yeah. How did, and how does it feel to sit with your arms folded the opposite way? Like, why am I doing this? Not that weird. <laughs> No. No. Uh, the second time you did it. Second time. Easier. A little bit easier? Easier. Uh, what, uh, UCLA, a psych department a number of years ago, 15 years ago, uh, put up a sign up on the board, uh, 20 bucks, three hours, come in and be lab rats. And they had the students fold and unfold their arms for three hours. They had coffee breaks. Three hours. What did they learn? They can do it both, yeah? There's probably easier ways to make 20 bucks. There's probably easier ways to make 20 bucks. We're going to get students to do it for 20 bucks. Poverty sucks. Yeah, yeah that's, that was too far. Uh, I was actually they forgot how they did it the first time. They totally forgot how they did it the first time. Could not remember. 92% of the participants they were so good couldn't both. remember what they were. They were trained ambidexterity. Could not. Uh, what does this tell us about the process of change? It's difficult. It's what? It's difficult. It's difficult, yeah. What else? It takes time. We can adapt. We are adaptable creatures. It takes time. It, it takes doing, like repeating a change. When we ask Canadians in polls, are you open to change? What do Canadians tell us? Yes. Overwhelmingly. Absolutely. I'm a totally open to change person. When we ask Canadians to change, <laughs> Not so much. What do you mean, Starbucks? <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, you said it earlier. A lot of people in this room um, have thought about this, have seen merit in it, or understood it, um, and believe it. Maybe vote on it. To a lot of our friends, to our neighbors, to the family, when we try to explain this stuff, they maybe glaze over. Don't know why this matters. Make your vote count. They, they have experienced a failed, a flawed system, a deeply flawed system. That's what they know, and they're comfortable with it. Naturally. It might suck, but this is the way I do it. Unless you're able to patiently describe why I need to do something different, and why this might be beneficial, I'm not necessarily wanting to do it. So I, I only offer this, and, in, and when thinking about how to approach liberal MPs, who to reach out to. We, if you signed in, we will provide you two things. One, the list of Liberal MPs that committed to the Fair Vote Election Pledge, so you can know, which give you the information. It's also on our Facebook and website. We will also give you all the Liberal MPs that quote unquote broke rank, just if you want to target your efforts. We've had a myriad of ideas come from across the country. There's one group outside of uh, Oshawa. They started the 227 Club, because their MP won by 226 votes. <laughs> and so they have 227 of his constituents that have signed a pledge card that said, my vote is determined by your vote. Just so you know, you won by 226. <laughs> maybe this is it, maybe it's not. But it's about that patience and understanding when trying to bring more people into this conversation about how your vote could matter. And I, I, I will wager this, that at some point, maybe in the next few days or week, you're going to have a, a, a moment of, of sedition. You're going to be, you know, sitting at the doc's office or waiting for a bus, and then you're going to do something totally alternative. <laughs> <laughs> and, and no one's going to know you're doing it except you. <laughs> and it might be a bit radical, sure. <laughs> but I could adapt, so I could change. The offer of uh, change in our politics is always the promise. It's, it's around the hope. And oftentimes, um, the people who want to keep things the same are the people where this has kind of worked out for. 
when we talk about poverty, when we talk about climate, when we talk about indigenous rights, the resistance we meet in the system is in part because people are comfortable with what they have and things are okay. The promise of something better is hard work. It takes description, it takes repetition, it takes all these different things. Maybe an idea or two came to your minds uh, tonight about a way to approach this thing. But uh, never, never lose hope in this stuff. Hey, looking through the history of any good change, it didn't happen the first time. This one's taking a long time. And we have to do a better, I would argue people like me have to do a better job explaining to larger audiences why this matters in their lives. That we can get better policy, we can get more accountable MPs, we can get less concentration of power in the hands of unelected people. And that your vote can count every single time. 18 million Canadians voted in the last election. Less than half of those votes elected anybody. I repeat that. 18 million of us went to the ballot box and voted. Less than half of those votes elected anybody. We count every vote in Canada, but not every vote counts. And some votes count for a lot more than others. And that's inherently unfair 